Clay Silver. This is 24-year-old Alex Pereira's debut fight as a professional kickboxer. Yes, this was in 2012, almost 12 years ago, and he looks almost exactly the same. It's like he was born with those tattoos. In the first two seconds of the fight, Alex gets leg kicked while trying to jab his opponent. Oh, sorte vermelho está o Clay Silva. The first strike absorbed in his professional career was a leg kick, and you know he took that very personally after that. You can tell by the footage already, this is such a young Pereira. Not nearly as polished in terms of his speed. He didn't find and test the distance, and he's just advancing with his attacks that are easily readable. I'm sounding mean as f here, but that's only because the current Pereira in 2024 is just that different. And that's a solid front kick. It got blocked though, and it's probably the last head front kick we will actually see. Even though this was 12 years ago, this man was still called Poeton. <laughs> Ele tenta ali ajoelhada, bem bloqueada pelo Clay. Clay tentou, ela entrou à esquerda, entrou dura! I love that confused look of Clay Silva. In his head, he was in the middle of landing a flying knee, and he just woke up half conscious on the other side of the octagon. He gets up and the fight continues. This sounds like a bad joke, but Clay Silva literally gets dropped again with a left hook. And this sounds even worse, but the fight ends with a standing TKO, ending with hooks as well. É, então, eu sabia que ele era um adversário duro. Fabio Alberto. Unfortunately, this was in a tournament and semi-finals fight, so there is no footage. We know it was a KO and we missed something beautiful, but then again, this is Fabio's career record, so... Yeah. Clay Silva too. This was another dominant performance by Pereira again. Alex did state he was basically a nobody already, so becoming a local champion so quick, there is almost no footage of his early fights then. Cinco nocaute, as três que eu perdi foi uma coisa assim, tipo que... Detalhezinho, Não, eu não, eu, pra, falar, pra ser sincero, é, eu, não, eu não concordo. Eu não era ninguém, assim, tal, e tal, e às vezes a gente... Só sabe, que pesou, a, a, entendi, acontece, entendi, 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 claro. E as pessoas dá pra... Eu, pô, hoje, se for hoje mesmo, com certeza as pessoas têm vídeo da luta, mas até hoje não posta, entendeu? Pô, já ganhei uma vez esse cara, mas não posta porque <risos> vai, vai, vai postar e vão, vão ter a prova aqui, né, aí, entendeu? Né? Luckily, this one exists though, and Clay Silva actually landing the spinning backfist of doom this time. Na linha de cintura, começa a desferir mais golpes do Clay Silva. Boa, sentiu agora, pegou. Vai pra cima o Clay Silva, tenta entrada de golpe. But that was basically it, and Alex won by unanimous decision. Felipe Micheletti. This fight also had no footage, but it ended with Alex winning by unanimous decision and becoming the local champion winner again. This had more credibility because Felipe is actually a glory fighter, so it was arguably Pareda's toughest fight at the time. Jason Wilness. This is the introduction to the mythical fighter Super Tribal Pareda. With I am totally guessing his new haircut conveying his indigenous roots. Fight starts and you can still see some of the amateur mistakes Pereira has. Right now he is all power and still needs to work on his speed and defense. After every exchange, Pereira does a good shot, but Wilness blocks it in time and does a quick solid leg kick, which surprises Alex every time in round one. Also, let's just ignore that spinning back kick. But Pereira's scoring and he's winning the fight. Yeah, you know, I'm just wondering where... And there he go, he got dropped. Not as you expect, but he fell down from a strike regardless. If we slow down, you really see Alex's recklessness. He didn't respect the low kicks chipping in down in every exchange, and that low kick shut his leg down for a second and he fell. As much as I love Pereira, I can definitely accept the fact he got outclassed in this fight. Oh, there we have it! Beautiful left body hook, right to the liver by Wellness. And he's dropped him, and Pereira's struggling to get up here. Oh, going to explode on it now, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Jason, Jason Willis, again. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. That looks so surreal to watch. The giant Poetone champion we knew getting dropped like that just doesn't look real. And it was a left hook too. Oh, my God. And he gets dropped again by another left body hook. And the lights turned off for some reason. That, that was kind of sad to watch as well. So the venue malfunctioned and Pereira had way more than a 10 count to recover. If Jason Wilness now doesn't win this fight, you know, it's going to be... The second, trying to finish this round. Oh, fantastic pressure oh, for Wilness. Oh, he's with a low oh, kick now. Fantastic. And the fight ends with a leg kick TKO. Oh my goodness, this is the 9-11 for Pereira fans. This definitely flipped Pereira's world upside down, and at this point he should actually rely on kickboxing skills rather than his power now.
Cesar Almeida. After a short break, Alex comes back to fight and he is a hundred times better than he was a month ago. He actually wins most of the exchanges and is more dominant. He improved his head movement and defense, but it's still kind of bad, but his fight IQ and timing is a lot better. Sometimes catching a left hook in the perfect time gap when the opponent is reaching and doubling up with a left hook. And also I think this opponent just had a strong ass chin too. Pereira won by unanimous decision. This fight could be argued as a robbery because it was a close match. Pereira did outstrike for a good amount of the fight, but Almeida had a blessed chin and destroyed Alex in the final round. So not a giant robbery, but you can still throw the debate up in the air for fun. Matias Adaro. With the ball rolling, Pereira is more confident as a fighter and actually has his guard up this time. There are some cases where he doesn't take his time and just shoves a big head kick out of nowhere. O brasileiro, valendo o título pan-americano. It might just be me, but the other guy could be in a completely different weight class. He's just so much weaker than Pereira here. O kick se defendeu bem. O Matias Adaro. Voltou o braço argentino. Zorello, tentou giratório, passou no Brasil. It does seem discouraging where the opponent does get the upper hand in some exchanges, but the power gap is just too big where it just doesn't matter. Which leads to the brutal KO with the simplest textbook 1-2. Camilo Ferraz. Alex now has the ball super rolling where he tests the power of a couple of leg kicks and finalizes the decision to tee off from that. É 85 quilos. Aqui o pau tá comendo. Ô oh, rapaz, que chegada. Also, I don't know what's up with all the spinning back fists. Foi pra cima. Yeah, I think we know he's a trick ass bitch, but this moment makes us all realize that Alex's defense has gotten a lot better. I don't think the Pereira at the start of this video would have seen a lead tape to spinning back fist like that. The ref stopped the fight for a few seconds. I'm not sure what he was trying to say because I don't know Portuguese. So I'll leave it to the comment section to translate it. <laughs> and I know we've all been waiting for it, and here it is. <laughs> Camillo literally flew up from the power of the left hook. After that, he just wasn't the same anymore. Dropped again from a knee, and dropped again from an even more brutal knee, and that's all she wrote. Caesar Almeida 2. Do you remember Almeida? Yeah, that guy I said could be an arguable robbery. Yeah, I wasn't talking mad shit. He got the rematch against Pereira, and it went the whole other way around now. They actually play it patiently in the first round. Almeida is still faster and getting the better of the exchanges with a free leg kick each time. In the last 10 seconds, Alex got the last laugh in the first round, rocking his opponent with a clean right hand. <laughs> round 2 begins and it goes so hard. Oh, that is just cheating. What is Alex made out of? That small exchange gave me Dan Hooker versus Dustin vibes for a second. I'm not gonna lie, this feels like a rivalry now. After Alex's last finish by a knee KO, he uses it as all reliable as well as the left hook. <laughs> Errado. Smart move by Almeida where he just posts up on Alex like that and has time to recover. Either that or Alex was showing off his takedown skills. Almeida the whole time looks like he's downloading and trying to analyze a gap he can take advantage of. You can tell he is understanding the overuse of knees by Alex, but for me, it's looking like Alex won the first two rounds though. Third round and basically the same thing happened. Almeida has more cardio and does more output, but you can argue it was a close round anyway. And here is the result. Marinho.
Yep, a robbery, kind of like the first fight, but this maybe was the bigger robbery. All the comments in the video literally say so, so I didn't just edit the video to make it look like a robbery, so yeah, here's your proof. Dustin Jacoby. This is Pareda's debut fight in the kickboxing organization Glory. And he just put his foot in the door the best way possible. He fights Dustin Jacoby, who I feel like they just fed him to Pareda because of that record. You can see parts of the current Pareda here and some parts where he's experimenting and figuring out his style. It doesn't take long though where he finally got the timing and range for a signature move. Yep, slipped him cold just like that in the first round. I actually feel sorry for his opponents now. Alex is literally a different human being. One thing you will notice by now is that Alex will always do a rare knee to a left hook. I don't know the science behind it, but a lot of people just can't figure it out. And if they do, it's it's kind of too late. They already got knocked out by it. Sahak Papayan. This fight could debatably be very boring, so I won't talk about this too much. It was a majority decision win, where you can actually predict how the fight went. Pereira dropped his opponent round one and had it going smoothly. Got tired really quick and the opponent just had the ball rolling, but the timer ran out. Alex came out as the better looking fighter and it was Sahak's fault for not doing more because that's the rule. You don't get points if you act like you can fight another round. It's on you for not doing more in the given rounds. But that's a topic too controversial for my sub count size, so I'll just segue into something even better. Yep, the whole UFC community has now been comparing Alex Pereira to Andrew Tate. Why you ask? It sounds pretty obvious Pereira would kill Tate, but why is this even discussed? The community's only frame of reference to compare the two is that they both fought Sahak. If you can think for more than one second, you can clearly see more variables that can basically make this debate worthless, but it's the MMA community, so half of them have CTE anyway. Alexander Dimitrenko. I'm not gonna lie, brother looks so scared to fight Alex right now. I mean, look at him. Pareto looked like he trained more on his appearance for the post-fight win interview. First round begins and I'm actually impressed. The opponent does look faster and got his momentum first. Alex seems to be a little frustrated, acting like he just wants this to end. More annoyed than actually worried if he's going to lose. Yep. We were waiting for it, the trusty left hook to knee combo. It was actually the right hand that rocked him at the start though. After that, Alexander never really came back the same. Either that or he just couldn't find an answer to the left hook and knee combo. Alex Pereira! Alex Pereira! Artem Levin. Number 7 ranked middleweight kickboxer Alex faces Levin who is extremely respected by the glory community. I mean look at that record difference and these two are basically the same age. If you don't believe me just look at his performance against Pereira. Not even 10 seconds into the fight and Levin has already outplayed Pereira. Alex's signature left hook just doesn't seem to work and each time he tries he gets chopped with a strong leg kick. Levin just knows the game better than Pereira, he is just too experienced. It goes beyond who is better at fighting and who who can just compete at the top levels of kickboxing rules. Levin knows when to attack and find the right range to close in and clinch a knee before Alex can counter with something. That was just round one. It's safe to say the matchup between the number 7 ranked and number 1 ranked is a little too much. You could argue it being a good matchup in MMA where it just takes one of the many martial arts to overpower someone in a fight. It's a little bit of a robbery but Sean O'Malley's precision striking that's just a bit better than Jan arguably made him jump like 10 ranks in MMA. You can tell this is a different story here where every one of these athletes are disciplined in kickboxing and refines the same art. They can all do spinny power powerful sh** and the competition is just rougher. I'm pretty sure over that talk I showed b-roll footage of round 2 and yeah, Pereira just has no trump cards for this fight. Ladies and gentlemen, after 3 rounds we go to the judges scorecard and all 3 judges score them about the same 30-27. A unanimous decision for your winner who now moves on in the middleweight tournament, Artem Levin! Robert Thomas. Alex comes back to WGP kickboxing and fights someone with less experience than him this time. With that being said, I basically summed up the result of the fight. You can see Alex being a different person after the recent loss. You can see him actually switching stances, lead high kicking and being patient. When you watch this, you can see he had a small style reset where you could look at this thinking he got worse. 
but he is just experimenting. And when he finds his timing and rhythm... Cortou giratório. Lucas Medina, que espetacular! Wow! Wow! Yep, lights out. Well, not really. Robert kinda has a strong chin and it goes to decision. Ivan Galaz. We reach Alex Pereira's last fight in 2014 where he wants to end it in style. He definitely feels different in this fight, in terms of his style and his upcoming finish. He plays it slow and patient in round one and finds his opponent's weakness. I say that, but he's still punching and head kicking hard as f still. And blink and you will miss it. Really quick, Ivan checks his arm and see if it's okay. The lack of dodging and checking body kicks have left a toll on his arm, which leads to the finish. Just goes to show how strong Alex is. Ivan's life is basically getting physically traumatized on a daily basis, and even the pain of Alex's strikes is too much. Alex's first ever TKO win. Jason Wilness. The rivalry not many people knew about. Yes, Alex gets the opportunity to rematch Jason Wilness and prove himself he is now an improved fighter and can reach the higher levels of glory kickboxing. Is what I would say if Alex didn't get dropped in the first round. But that is also what I would say if Alex didn't drop Wilness in the third round. What the f*** am I saying? Jason got knocked down early in the fight and cruised well enough to win. And it was only the late knockdown in the last minute by Alex that made it look like he had something going. Sadly, it was a unanimous decision loss and he's still fine tuning himself as a fighter. Caesar Almeida 3 Welcome to the trilogy fight of Almeida and Pereira. Two close fights who won by robbery and now the third one to decide the better fighter. At least, I hope. More hungry than ever, here comes Pereira in the first second of the round. Alex Potan Pereira com as luvas azuis, Cezinho Almeida com as luvas vermelhas, o Alex Pereira já vai para cima, trabalhou a sequência de trocação, chute rodado. O César, ao brinde principal essa noite, tentou o chute rodado agora. Sadly, this is the closest spinning heel kick in his whole career so far. Pretty even first round, they got the feeling out process out of the way. It's definitely a great kickboxing study case of two even fighters battling it out. And here comes the most replayed part of the video. Yeah. At the start of round two, Alex slips. Yeah, you know the fight's kind of dry if I'm highlighting this. No pun intended. And of course, as soon as I say that, we see Alex's best wheel kick. Passa essa esquerda no vazio. Tentou o chute de rodada, entrou. Entrou o chute de rodada do Alex Pereira. Not on some Edson Barboza level type beat, but close enough. At the end of round two, they were kind of playing footsies for a bit, considering it was a five round battle. But then Alex hits Almeida clean with an overhand and his natural instincts kicked in with the left hook knee combo. And here comes the second knockdown. I give Almeida the almost GOAT status. I've never seen someone tank five Pereira left hooks like that and not die. The fight goes to decision because Almeida obviously needs to play it safe and defensive after two knockdowns. So three rounds of Pereira trying to find the perfect shot, but never happens and Alex wins by unanimous decision and becoming the WGP kickboxing champion. Israel Adesanya. Oh, we've been waiting for this one. It is a bit strange. It could be some weird destiny shit, but this is Alex's first fight in a new organization out of nowhere. Yeah, just suddenly took a trip to China and fought against his future rival on the big stage and dropped the hardest trailer for himself too. You can tell without watching it yet that these guys have improved so much compared to their recent fights in the UFC. The first round begins and they fight as if it's the last round. It does not matter if you're an Izzy fan or an Alex fan. Watching this first round, you can tell Izzy has the better distant management, feints and combinations. Also, I don't know why Izzy is taunting like that. I'm pretty sure they just met. This was also back when Adesanya was actually the style bender as well. He started using switch kicks and lead kicks and also going southpaw. That definitely made Pereira have second thoughts on his game plan and slowed him down on what he was doing. Izzy is winning most of the exchanges but doesn't have much power to finish the fight. But it is affecting Alex's patience though. I don't think Alex got outclassed though. He got some hits in when Izzy just straight up didn't see it coming. Coming into the third round, you can tell one of Pereira's biggest weaknesses so far is his cardio. 
every final round so far, he looks absolutely exhausted and just relies on his fight IQ and power to finish the fight from that point on. Either that or edges a decision win. I don't want to dive deep into the fight, but it was definitely close. Izzy won most of the exchanges with the striking, but it didn't look like it hurt Alex at all. And the few times Alex got some hits in, it looked so much more damaging. So that's why it looked like Alex took the W here. Junior Alpha. Alex comes back to Brazil to defend his WGP belt by fighting Junior Alpha. Yes, that is the best name in the world. Round one begins and Alex tries to do a well kick again. He can't help it, the Brazilian genes are just making him do it. Of course it misses and Junior knows to capitalize on it and the flow changes. During round 2, it seems like Alex learned from Izzy and started to play the fainting game a lot more and actually gets a wheel kick. Not only that, I think he worked on his cardio too. And he plays it patient just a bit longer and gets it done. Artur Kishinko. Alex fights again in China and fights an extremely experienced fighter. As of this date, he has accumulated over 190 wins in kickboxing. 190. A lot was amateur, but still 190 is still a lot and I feel bad for his brain if it still works. The fight begins and everything seems normal like every other fight. Arta is less loose than Alex and a lot more stocky, so he springs into his strikes. Alex does a good job narrowing down the opponent's options where he body kicks him every time he wants to leave the pocket. Alex also taunts Arta for that weak body shot. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but okay. Round 2 and Alex does a good job keeping his distance and mainly kickboxes taking advantage of his height. And then when Arta wants to cut into the pocket, Alex has a smooth left hook ready for him. But that is exactly what Arta is noticing too. Arta gets a combination in and clipped Alex with his own left hook real quick. Yeah, no words from me. Th that power is different. To be fair, this is still local Alex diving into the international world of kickboxing, so he has a lot to learn still. Israel Adesanya too. Here comes the kickboxing rematch everyone wanted. Since they had a feeling out process already, they went straight to it and acted like it was just a continuation of the last fight. They played it already extremely calculated and one rock could dictate the fight. Izzy does the same thing as usual being a little bit more technical and winning a few more exchanges. But this is where I think it went wrong for him. Izzy got a bit frustrated at the last match and felt like he got robbed. He sort of didn't respect the power from Pareda the last fight and wanted to get the finish so there is no rigged robbery this time. Sadly for Izzy, that made him a bit too reckless and he forgot how fast and powerful Alex's left hook was. Alex gets the win and such a short quick punch did it. Bruce Lee would be proud. Buram Rama Alex returns to glory and wants to make another run at the organization. 
coming in with two wins and two losses in his glory record, he really wants to show how much he's improved. Fighting bronze medalist Burham and with that record, they really lowered the bar for Pereira just in case he is that bad. It just makes it more satisfying for Alex to really prove himself, where he basically dominated the fight from start to finish. Alex just had overwhelming power and combinations where Burham didn't even look like he was there most of the time. It seems like Rama would just be happy to survive the fight. Yep, the commentator basically summed it up. TKO in the third round. Yuzri Balgarui. This is the Glory Finals match of the tournament. A huge fight. Yuzri made a name for himself already. Having a good record at the time of 21 wins and 3 losses. And 2 of those losses come from Israel Adesanya. So styles really do make fights once we see the result. First round went by real quick and Alex just doesn't have an answer for Yuzri. The round was basically Alex being in the center of the ring. But Yuzri has lots of skill fighting backwards and in tight corners where it doesn't look like he isn't even trying. Round 2 begins and it looks like Alex is trying to play more patient but it doesn't work. He just doesn't have the same skill set at this point of time. He lacks the general defense and he's not that good at fighting backwards. This video by the Futurist gives a good explanation on how Alex Pereira likes to have his guard down most of the time and doesn't want to achieve a more standard style. Where you would need to at least put your hands up when you need to or adopt a defensive style when needed. I can't go on about this too long so it's kind of your fault if you don't watch it. And this is probably Alex's first opponent who is significantly taller than him, so there you go. Yuzri was just outplaying Pereira sadly. And it makes it worse because Pereira's cardio starts to kick in too and he's running out of cards. He's just waiting for the fight to finish and praying he doesn't get KO'd. What a striking difference. Yep, loss. Macon Silver. I'm not sure what happened to Pereira, but the moment he turned 30, he just became a different person. He goes on an underrated win streak, almost as legendary as the Tony Ferguson win streak. Alex looks way calmer. The finals match of glory probably took a toll on his mentality and he just looks so much more collected here. Seeing the fight so far, Alex keeps his distance well, he uses feints and head movement better and looks at his opponent dead in the eye now. I've just noticed that. Also fun fact, this debut of the win streak Pereira is the ultimate alter ego version in UFC 5, where they basically said it's the best striker in the game. I feel like this whole time Alex was playing possum with his power, drawing out the opponent to rush something. That was so fast. I, it was a left hook. I didn't even see him throw it. It was so fast. It's not like he didn't left hook him a hundred times before, but that one was just perfect and sent him flying. Simon Marcus. Alex then fights Simon Marcus who at one point had a record of 39 wins and no losses. So you know this is a good fight. First round and it's the feeling out process. When I say feeling out process, it's still in kickboxing standards, so they are still going to swing and bang sometimes. Quite an even first round, even the judges think so. This is a title fight, so Alex is playing this super seriously. Just like that in round 2, Alex's boxing just became even more dangerous. I wasn't sure if it was possible, but we are quite literally looking at it. Not clean flush right hand, but enough to make the champion fall down to the ground. Simon wants to make a response, but Alex is just so dominant always in the center of the ring and shuts down anything Simon wants to do. Alex continues the next rounds just shutting down any advantageous scheme Simon is trying to do and throws in a bit of his own flair. Fight ends in a decision but it was still a dominant performance now becoming the glory kickboxing champion. Who said this guy has no emotion? He's literally breaking down here. This is also just the beginning of Pereira's kickboxing career. Yuzri Balgarui 2 the rematch we needed. Yuzri has been talking shit on social media about how he can get the bout from Alex Pereira. So let's see how well Alex can defend a bout now. Round 1 begins and let's see if Alex has improved since their first fight. Yuzri comes in clean with 3 back to back right hands that Alex is surprisingly bad at defending. Again, watch that video. And Yuzri taunts Alex a bit at the end there with a small touch to the head. Alex will remember that. Into the second round, Alex is really good at starting up his calf kicks and right hand punch into the same motion. You never really know which one he's going to do until it's too late and either one is gonna hurt really bad. Yeah, Alex made a cheeky payback punch there. Near the end of the third round, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Flush right hand wobbled Yuzri. And that is that, bout defense secured. 
The fight ender was that nasty head and knee where it cut a chunk of Usury's face off. I definitely need to censor that. Jesus. Usury Balgaroy 3. After that doctor stoppage, Usury wanted a definitive fight that would settle the score. They are 1 and 1 right now. With the 7 month gap between the last loss, can he make a comeback? That was the worst case scenario for Usury, but the best for Alex. He retains the glory middleweight belt and makes sure there is no fourth fight. Simon Marcus 2. After that, the organization really needed to test Alex Pereira. They still can't believe what a switch up he did. Is he really the same person literally one year ago? He rematches Simon Marcus, rightfully so, as he was the ex-champion. Fight starts and you start to realize this is somewhat similar to our current Alex. He's keeping his distance and feeling out his range with his kicks first and really just pacing himself. Alex is just more dominant, kind of like the last fight and still loves his left hook knee combo. The only highlight that really shows that this was a secure win was the knockdown near the middle of the fight. If I was the ref, I would have just ended it there. It wasn't just a knockdown. He got absolutely folded. But the fight continues and nothing too crazy happened and Alex defended the bout via unanimous decision. Jason Wilness 3 Okay, they know Alex is a beast now, but now they have the big guns ready. Jason Wilness comes back to fight Pereira. Having a record of 2-0 already against Alex, he comes in very confident knowing he has a good chance of taking the bout. Coming into the first seconds of the fight, Alex unleashes his go-to combinations just like that. Wilness told us this week he doesn't believe that Pereira is a true kickboxer. Says he's just a boxer that's doing kickboxing. Pereira did not like that. I think he's about to eat those words, quite literally. Ended up getting him that TKO finish. Oh, high kick! Wow! And now Pereira going for the finish! What a leaping knee! Down twice! It's Jason Wilness! He doesn't know what's hit him! It's no knee. It's over! Easy work for Poetan Pereira! Yep, round one KO after losing to Jason Wilness two times. I feel like 30-year-old Pereira can destroy 29-year-old Pereira. And yes, that is weird, but also sort of correct to say. Donegi Abina. After that rivalry was settled, Alex wanted to set his goals higher, trying to attain the light heavyweight belt. He fights Abena for the interim light heavyweight belt and see how well he goes against people his own size. The only problem is that his opponent is only 21 years old. Not to take anything away from him, he is ranked number 2 during this fight and he is probably the strongest 21 year old in the world. But this is Alex Pereira we are talking about. And Alex doesn't accept the glove touch. Very strange nature he has right now. Fight goes on pretty normal, they feel each other and Pereira got pushed way back probably realizing the size and power of light heavyweights. Abena looks good, but from his movements, he seems a lot slower than Pereira, and it looks like he is intimidated by him too. Round 1 goes to Alex. Round 2 starts and Abena already gets wobbled. He gets wobbled in the middle of this high kick. It was the left hook of course that rocked him, but his commitment level is crazy. At this point, I think Alex got bored, so he just unleashed a bunch of what he does best and throws knees and left hooks. I hate how that works. Yeah, but anyway, Abena basically dies. Round three, Pereira. <laughs> Pereira looking to make history here. Oh, oh no! Oh, he's done it! He Uturu Bayrak. Enough of these side missions. We need to solidify Alex's legacy as a middleweight champion. He returns to fight Uturu Bayrak. He is the number one contender, so this is a rightfully due bout. But just in the last second of the first round. No, his nose is already oh. winning. And a left hook right at the bell. And that is it. Hands of stone. I would say this is enough to say Pereira is a middleweight goat in glory. Artem Fakitov. This is the validation fight to see if Alex Pereira really has what it takes to be a true double weight champion. This is like if John Jones actually accepts the fight against Tom Aspinall. I can say that because it will age well. Artem starts off with a good amount of pressure and looks like he's being reserved for the first round. I don't know what Alex is doing, he's like frozen, trying out a new style I guess. He's pretty confident in his short left hooks where he can go from 0 to 100 in terms of speed and power, but it also looks like a taunt. He can be quite creative in his taunts too, so that's probably why. Nothing else really happened until the end of round 4. Look at his chin. That's 
That's just cheating. You can take three punches flush like that and nothing. But one stubby left hook and the opponent is gone. And here comes round five. Ah, uh, come on. How many right hands was that? Also, just how strong is Izzy then? Fight ends without a finish. Potato was more clean most of the time and landed so much more strikes. Our team got more critical moments, but it's just Alex's chin that makes it look like it was nothing. Of course, it comes to a split decision because the judges at the time are still in shock on how Alex just did that. And even the fighters are shocked on the result too. We all know what's going to happen next, but for right now, congratulations double champion Alex. Our team Vakitov too. Here comes the rematch and Alex kinda has a good game plan. So he likes to clinch a lot and loves to taunt. I feel like he can clinch and win by points easily. And when he taunts, he can obviously see the readable cut in and will just left chook him- Left chook? Fuck. <laughs> and when he taunts, he can obviously see the readable cut in and will left check hook him like usual. Alright that- Alright that take is good enough, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> At the end of the day, Alex is not really scared of Vakitov. He already tanked all of his punches the first time. That is on some Looney Tunes type beat. Alex is just not phased. And here comes the moment I hate to show you. Yep, a point deducted to Alex because he was holding too much and not engaging. It's sad to say this, but this is what actually made him lose the fight. Alex just doesn't look interested anymore in glory. He clearly retired after this fight. Maybe defending two bouts at the same time in one organization isn't on his life to-do list, sadly. And thus begins his uprising MMA career. Quimel Otoni. We are going back in time to 2015 where Alex wanted to prove himself as a balanced MMA fighter and how advantageous his striking would lead him. This is 27 year old Pereira so this was long before his glory win streak and him as a refined kickboxer. During this stage, it was when Alex realised he is plowing through everyone with his power and seeing how far his genetics can take him. Yes, it is very weird seeing Alex actually going hard on the grappling. Alex tries to narrow down this position so he can take his opponent's arm, but Otoni reverses and now takes Alex's back. You can tell this is quite an amateur fight where it goes from submission attempt to submission attempt to submission attempt. They are just praying the opponent doesn't know how to defend it and they can just get the sub win. Second round and Alex clips the sweat out of the opponent. He tees off for a long time. The ground game for the whole first round took a huge toll on Alex Cardio and he just doesn't have the same power to finish it. Either that or Tony just has the best chin. This is unironically the hardest fight Alex has been in. They went to war. It looks like they are both gonna get TKO'd by exhaustion. And it was settled in the last round. Alex just wasn't there and he realized his body can't expend the usual striking prowess and get submitted. Marcelo Cruz. Coming off an 0-1 in MMA, it takes a lot of courage to still keep going while still having such a good kickboxing career. Alex comes in strong against Marcelo and it looks like he still has the same game plan. It looks like he wants to finish it before it gets tired. Sadly, it goes to the ground and Alex couldn't defend. After a while in guard, the ref for some reason pulls them up. The fight for some reason was 3 5 minute rounds, which is surprisingly long. So I'm not sure why the ref wants to see engagement so quickly. But regardless, this is the best thing to happen for Alex. He gets his striking rhythm and destroys Marcelo. Isso, cruzado de esquerda no Brasil. Entrou direita. Entrou direita do Alex Pereira. Agora é questão de tempo. Vai batendo. Firme com vontade. A esquerda de... So this basically solidifies Alex's MMA style. Strike as much as possible and learn how to defend takedowns and avoid the ground game. Pretty obvious by now, but we won't be seeing Pereira actively engaging in wrestling and all that like the first fight. 
Marcus Viniscus de Severia. This fight basically validated my last statement. Alex just doesn't want it to go to the ground. Marcus knows that he will get killed on the feet, so he pushes Alex to the fence and see what he can work with. Alex's high IQ could be seen as low IQ, but he literally just does nothing so the ref can pull him off. This happens a lot where Marcus makes a combination into a takedown so he can dodge a counter and have a chance to play on the ground. Further into the fight, Alex knew to play defensive for a long time so he can conserve energy while Marcus lost a lot. And when the timing was just right, Thomas Powell. Alex is coming into this fight as a favorite and we know why. Many UFC fans have seen that fight already, but I don't want to spoil it for the people who haven't seen it yet. The fight starts as usual, more strike based. They are in open stance, so it's a game of who can land the perfect rear attack first. Use takedowns, tire him out. He feels he can finish. I really hope that wasn't actually a quote he said. Alex drops Thomas in the first minute but gets up. Very smart move. Now that Thomas experienced the power firsthand, he plays it more conservatively for the next few minutes. And that's when Alex capitalized on it. Oh. Kick over Whoa. and out! According to the ESPN MMA reporter Ariel Hawani, Powell said out cold for approximately five minutes. Didn't move, one of the scariest byproducts of a KO in recent memory. After that fight, it was pretty obvious big MMA organizations wanted this man to be part of their roster. And just exactly one year after this fight, we got to see Alex on the main stage. Hello guys, now it's official. UFC, thank you. I'm so happy to be part of the family. Andreas Mihalidis. This is Alex's first fight in the UFC and it was in Madison Square Garden. It's almost like a prophecy. I can actually take a break and shut up because Alex has his own commentary on this fight. I knew it was a hard fight. I knew he was going to come to do all the force, to grab him. The first round was going to grab him all the time. But I was prepared for what he was going to do. Eu tinha visto né, que ele tinha feito pô, a força do mundo ali e eu tava bem tranquilo, né, ele tentou, tentou me machucar ali numa distância pô, muito, assim, muito longa, né, tentando me acertar com chutes, aonde eu saí rapidamente, eu esperei o momento certo ali e no ele. Bruno Silva People forgot how much of a good fighter Bruno Silva was. He was coming into this fight with a 7 win streak. To make it sound even more impressive, he was 17 and 1 in his last 18 fights. Basically undefeated in the past 10 years, except for that one fight. The commentators said Bruno Silva might want to play it dirty in order to win. Spamming takedowns and make Alex scared to strike. It was quite successful in the first round, where Alex is basically in the back foot for most of the fight. And he got a takedown and did some work, but got up at the end. And just in the last 10 seconds, Alex just wanted to give Bruno a reality check. He was fighting someone with extreme speed and power. Second round was okay. They did well, but Alex really didn't want to use up any energy and lose like the first time. There were exchanges of a bit of grappling, striking, and clinching. Throughout the third round, Pereira definitely played it smart where he saved up his energy. He didn't finish the fight, but he definitely won that round to win. He had the power to deny takedowns, reverse some, and outstrike Silver on the feet. Sean Strickland. Here's the thing, man. Here's the f thing. Let me tell you guys something. There's not one glory f kickboxer in any f weight class I couldn't stand and bang with. Oh! Israel Adesanya. In just about one year, Alex made his way to a title shot. Rightfully deserved as he plowed through his way to the top and has already KO'd the champion before. There was so much hype going into this fight. It looked like Adesanya was going to be the next GOAT where he lapped through the division twice. Then came along this light heavyweight who can magically fit into the middleweight division ready to kickbox this guy. 
I don't want to really dive into the hype and drama around this, mainly because it will take too long and there is already an endless amount of content on YouTube already. So Alex comes in with a flying teep to the face to assert dominance. Let's be real, it's to assert dominance. This fight was a nervous wreck. Not even the commentators knew what to say because they knew the intensity of this sh in the first round, Alex was more successful in the leg kicking game, which this is the only MMA fight where it matters the most. Both long ranged kickboxers, and if they can chip down the health of the legs, it will basically dictate the fight. He times it well to think he's not going for a calf kick, but actually does. Alex came in with more strikes into the first round and looked like he had the advantage. But as he felt more confident in the octagon at this point of time. This really paid off already where he got the fainting game solidified and his head movement game solidified to probably discourage Pareto from doing certain tactics. And to top it off and make sure it was a 10-9 round for him. And he landed a big knee. Oh! Oh! Huge right! Into the second round and nothing too significant happened. I mean, there was definitely brain damage, but nothing too crazy. Alex was still trying to recover from that round one rock and plays it slow and patient. He gets frustrated quick because of Izzy's speed and head movement, which didn't really help. He managed to get some good highlights in, like a good jab and a head kick. It wasn't a flush head kick where it was a combination just after a low kick, so it didn't knock him out. And this beautiful takedown to make sure Izzy doesn't do any more sneaky last second tricks before the round. Now into the third, Izzy looks way more confident. Throughout the fight, he isn't normally the same, mainly because of Alex. He knows if he throws more than two punches in a combination, there is a risk of him not knowing what's going on and a big fat check left hook is there to greet his face again. Alex looks tired and tries to go to the ground again, but Izzy reverse throws him and gets the advantage. The whole third round was basically on the ground. Round four is the, kind of the same. A good portion was on the feet, but you can tell both fighters are conserving energy. They are mostly playing with their brains. They know they only have like 30% of energy in the tank and they are just waiting for the other person to make a mistake. Either missing a big shot and countering big, or them not seeing something and getting slightly rocked. Once that opportunity happens, they will go full throttle and gas it all out for the finish. Sadly, this doesn't happen in round 4 and it was quite an even match here. Round 5 starts and this is what we have been waiting for. They are on the same level and each small movement matters. And just at the start of round 5, Izzy was sloppy and got leg checked by Pareto. Alex came rushing in so fast because this was the moment we have been waiting for. Alex goes for the same straight punch that killed Sean when he was trying to get up. Small easter egg there. The champ now has a broken leg and is rushing with adrenaline to the point where he is overstimulated. He is freaking the f*** out. Izzy tries to pace out the round but Alex comes rushing in with his signature left hook. This was the beginning of the end. Alex went full throttle, didn't care and just went swinging. Pereira's had his most success for the body tonight. Oh! oh. Israel Adesanya. Now only 6 pay per view cards later, Alex has a chance to defend the title against the challenger this time, Israel Adesanya. Alex knew this was gonna happen. He was basically 3-0. He knows Izzy is good, but if he can shut his lights out again and make sure Izzy doesn't use his slight technical edge to win a decision, it should be all fine. There are people saying Alex has no personality. Well, those people just didn't research enough. Something does seem a bit off though. It seems like the roles were switched a little bit. Normally it is Izzy who is the carefree superstar giving love to the camera, but now Alex is doing it and Izzy is just serious most of the time. In Miami, confident as ever, Alex comes into the fight wearing the champion Venom shorts and faces off Adesanya for the fourth time. Round one begins and everyone is already feeling the aura of the fight. Alex seems to be the more confident one at the start, just doing his usual silent taunts after a hit to discourage the power. Yeah, he does that. He's throwing teeps just to push him away from the pocket to frustrate Izzy. And he's forwarding and circling so Izzy is always in the back foot. Alex goes for the lead leg kick to high kick again that worked on the first fight but it missed. Mainly because Izzy is in southpaw and is switching stances a lot more now. Second round begins and you can see some subtle changes. 
as he is being more risky now. I don't know about confident yet, but he gets checked by a few left hooks while going for that right hand. And he seems to be pushing more pressure where Alex is in the back foot sometimes now. And at the end of the round, Izzy plays possum. Alex fought him three times and won. He is definitely confident in his own power. This is what happens when you fought a guy so many times, you start to know the attack patterns and the trusty knee-left hook combo. You saw him buckle with that low kick. He's gonna limit him to southpaw. Oh. Again. The head is so oh, dangerous. And Alex loses the middleweight champion bout, but not all is lost. He said a few times that cutting down to middleweight was just too much for him, and his chin paid the price. He is older now, and he is more comfortable in a heavier division. And it was probably smart to end the rivalry there. No point on a fifth fight. I mean, at least for now. Jan Blahovic. Not even a big break, Alex debuts as a light heavyweight fighter matched up against Jan Blahovic. His kickboxing mentality is still there. He fought in multiple fights in the same day. A few months break is like a holiday for him. This performance is a bit of a rough one. There are a few conditions that make him look a lot worse than he really is. He's jumping a weight class, so you are just naturally not comfortable with a new variety of fighters. And the conventions of what things are effective changes slightly. He is fighting Jan who is a more balanced fighter so his training camp is pushed towards a defensive ground game so it won't look too exciting for the fans but will help a lot in the fight. He is also fighting in Utah with high elevation. So to an average person, compared to his last fight, he's gonna look more tired, wrestle a lot more and will look fatter. But if you made it this far into the video, you are most likely not a casual viewer and not an idiot, so you can understand it's actually better for Pareda. Round 1 begins and it's already hard on our boy. Jan did say he wants to strike with Alex, but that was a complete lie. He dives in for the takedown and the whole round was a bunch of submission attempts and transitions. Jan did win that round because he was on top more and out jujitsued him. Alex did have his spotlight, but he didn't deny or reverse enough to make himself the better ground fighter. Round 2 begins and my god, they are so slow. I thought the video was slowed down, but they are actually just so heavy and tired. Alex does what he does best and nearly breaks Jan's leg with the calf kicks. And this is coming from a calf kick expert himself. Jan nearly TKO'd Uncle Liev many times with leg kicks and he's a top light heavyweight contender as well. They go to the ground again but nothing too effective there. And Alex gets up and gives the audience a show. He corners Jan and has a chance to tee off. The crowd goes crazy but this is where Alex gets sloppy. He is clearly reserved now, still having mad PTSD after that flash KO. He gets some hits in and enough to win the round. Final round and they are exhausted. They get some chances to show some tricks, but it falls short because of the tiredness. Jan lands 4 shots on Alex accurately lunging forward, but it has no power. So Alex taunts him. And amongst the splurge of failed strikes, Alex lands a clean one that hurts Jan. Not enough to kill him like Alex usually does to opponents, but it was an outstanding play that made him win via split decision. This is a really recent fight, so me saying the words Alex versus Yeri is probably copyrighted. Yeri never lost his light heavyweight bout. He vacated it. And after that, Jamal Hill won the vacant bout, but vacated that. So Alex and Yeri fight for the definitive non-vacated, non-vacated light heavyweight bout. This was a very hype fight. Both having extremely good resumes where Alex was a kickboxing champion before the UFC and Yeri was an MMA champion before the UFC. So don't take these fighters lightly. Alex sleeps his opponent and Yeri only had one fight in his career that ended in decision. So you know this fight is not going to be boring. It's funny looking back that the most iconic thing about this fight was the face-off. The fight begins and stylistically, this is not a good matchup. Good for us, but not good for Yeri. Yeri gets stronger as he fights, but that has a big con. There's only so much a human body can physically take. Yeri's style is extremely unconventional, where he leans in a lot more than he should to spring into something. 
But it doesn't really work when you have a guy who can calf kick you to oblivion in a nanosecond. Seeing the difference on the feet was surreal. Yeri is obviously more balanced, so it shouldn't really be said, but still. It makes me appreciate the small, yet heavy details the Izzy fight was. Round 2 begins and the same stuff happens. Yeri just can't break his habit. It worked for him for years, but this time he gets punished for it. The only thing that works for Yeri, or I should say, one thing that Alex needs to fix is his defense. Especially for the right hand. Yeri had something going, and when he leaned in too much, yep, he literally got left hooked up into the air. The winner by TKO is Alex Pereira, and he solidified himself as a true MMA champion. Jamal Hill. Honestly, my brain is biased as hell, spending literally hours upon hours watching Pereira content. I've been seeing this guy in my dreams. That's how bad it is, or how good it is. I'm not too sure now. But regardless, no matter what happens in this fight, I believe it is UFC 300 worthy and should be a banger. We haven't really seen an all-out Jamal Hill, and he could have the potential to win against Pereira, but... Pereira is different. He finished Yeri just like that when everyone thought it would be a war. People forget Yeri's resume, he is definitely a god tier fighter, but who would have thought the gap between them was this big even for up there. Okay, bye.